Well, finally, it's here. My promise has been kept. G'day everyone, welcome to another video by myself, Andrew DFT. And yes, this is the one you've been waiting a long time for. It is the Star Wars DC-15 rifle tutorial. Now my aim in this tutorial is to obviously teach it to you all in once. You can see the timeline, it's a rather long video. I'm going to get through everything that you will need to create this besides one thing. But more on that in a second. So this tutorial obviously stemmed from this prop here. This is made out of styrofoam and PVC pipe, the exact same materials that you'll be using in this tutorial. It's a fantastic prop, I'm extremely happy with this. I put a lot of detail and time into really perfecting this and making it as best as possible from the live action version. And we'll be doing the same thing here. I've just simplified it a bit for this tutorial, but you'll be able to lift your own skills and get it to the standard if you so wish. Or you can choose to make it into a cartoon version or a real like silly version, that's completely up to you as well. So this is the final result from the tutorial. Like I said, it's got everything you'll need to produce this except for that one thing, which is the under compartment here. The reason I haven't done it is because at the time of filming this, I've actually been in a countrywide lockdown due to the coronavirus. Therefore, I have been unable to get the materials I need to produce this. So hopefully you guys might be able to manage it yourself. If not, I'll produce it as a standalone video later down the line. Now, like I mentioned, this is styrofoam and PVC pipe, extremely easy to use materials, extremely sturdy. This isn't a very fragile prop. This is pretty good in terms of carrying it around or using it for cosplay, whatever you wish. So therefore you shouldn't have any problems, but if you want to use EVA foam, the same tutorial will still apply. You'll just have to use your EVA skills a bit differently compared to the styrofoam. Now, because this is a long tutorial, I'll stop talking and we'll jump right in and get started. All right, so we're going to start with the back part of the gun. Go ahead, grab the templates, print them off, and we'll slowly cut it out carefully. It's going to span across three pages, so you're going to want to assemble it. I use masking tape as it allows me to see through the tape and see where the lines are going to be merged together. You can cut off the trigger guard as we're not going to need that at this point, and we're going to lay the main bulk of the back piece out onto the foam and cut it out. Now you can use styrofoam or EVA foam, it depends what you're doing. Obviously with a 40 millimeter styrofoam block, the thickness is already there. With EVA, you're gonna to have to layer it up. It is gonna be a bit more messier as you're gonna have the lines in between the layers, but that's something you can get over. What we'll do is we'll quickly draw on a horizontal line to make this section more elongated. We'll come back to combining them later, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do lay it onto the foam and then cut it out, and then we're gonna actually halve the block. You can choose what thickness you want on this section, it really is up to you, but I'm gonna go with almost one finger width thick. Cut that section out on both sides, and then we're gonna simply layer it in. We're not gonna glue it in just yet, we're gonna make sure we add these marking lines, because this is gonna establish where we need the back buttstock to be grooved and placed properly. Now we're gonna add in the bevel lines for the buttstock. This allows it to curve around so we don't have the 90 degree edges. All I'm doing is putting the bevel edges on the interiors and then adding some of the side panel ones and we're just gonna go ahead and cut off the edge there. You can do a rounded edge or you can do a straight vertical line going through this or I guess a more beveled line, not really vertical, but a straight line. It's up to you on how you want your groove to look. Next, we're gonna go and add this tiny piece that sits up above it. I don't know what you call it. We'll call it the tiny piece of rectangle detail. All you do is um, repair that template, cut out the rectangle as needed, and then as you'll see on the template, it kind of sits on a little in-groove. You can simply cut that away with a craft knife, and you want this little rectangle piece to actually be a bit thicker than the previous piece we made, so that way it sits on a nice terraced effect above that section. All right, next we'll go to the handle. Now obviously we do need to bevel this off to make sure your hand can wrap around it and it has the nice appearance that it is not a 90 degree angle. You can add those depth bevels to whatever you feel is necessary depending on your hand, whether you can't wrap it around the thickness of your foam, but I'll let you decide on what you want as long as it has, like I said, that appearance that it is curving. Once we've done that, we'll move ahead to actually glue in that compartment that we have previously cut out. We've done the alignment uh, lines. We know exactly where it should go. So you can apply your agent of glue. I use hot glue at a low temperature. It's easy enough and it goes in straight away and it dries literally on the spot. And that should sit in there perfectly. And that pretty much wraps up majority of what we need for this main build. The only thing we're going to add, which is optional, is this little piece that sits on the actual handle itself. Now I'm cutting these out to be additional layers. You can simply groove this in if you want it to be a part of the handle, or you can cut it away, make it an indented layer. That's up to you. I just like the extra thickness and the 3D look of it. 
All right, so this is the important part. Pay attention. What we're going to do is we're going to grab our PVC pipe or wooden dowel, whatever you've chosen to use. Mine is at a 38 millimeter uh, thickness, and we're going to go ahead and mark off where it meets on the template. So obviously you've printed out all the remainder of the template, line it up, tape it all together, and then at about 750 millimeters, depending on your printing size, uh, you can go ahead and cut off that mark to leave the excess and the actual length that we need for this barrel. You're also going to grab a thicker wooden dowel or PVC pipe that's just a tiny bit thicker. So I'm doing 38 millimeters and 40 millimeters. And that larger piece is going to measure the actual end of the barrel. As you can see here, I've got the long piece and the barrel addition at the end there cut out to the necessary length. Now we're going to have to get the PVC pipe into the gun somehow. So what we'll do is we'll grab the longer slash thinner piece and we'll actually go to the part that we've constructed already and we're going to draw the diameter or the circle around the end piece because we're actually going to now create a hole which we can bury this pipe into. Now obviously cutting a circle hole into it would be a bit difficult so what we're going to do is we're going to bring back some of those uh, guidelines and we're actually going to cut into the section. Now obviously cutting into the section is going to be a bit difficult because you want to make sure you're not hurting the exterior of your piece but don't worry about the bottom because we can actually cover this up so you won't know the difference. Just take it in compartments, slowly extend your blade out as long as you can and excavate this section so that way your pipe can easily be pushed in and ultimately apply a lot of hot glue at a low temperature, fill that up, make sure the pipe is in there straight and it should hold like that and already now you've got your spine and majority of your gun assembled so we can build around this piece then just to finish it off, you can cut out a nice little rectangle piece to fill the gap and throw it in there. Okay, so that's the main difficult parts out of the way. What follows in the next few minutes is a lot of the smaller details being applied. Me narrating it isn't going to really help you construct it more. So what I do advise is just visually see what I'm doing on screen and just mimic it in real life. Pretty much what you are going to be doing regardless. Uh, but most of the time here, I'm just taking smaller pieces of foam and slowly applying it on. Now, always go back to the template and of course your visual references to see how thick these pieces are. Now, this version of the DC-15 is actually a lot thicker and bulkier than the previous one I did because that's something I actually wanted to do as my personal preference. I wanted this to be a big bulky one to kind of have everything sticking out and standing out a bit more prominently than a nice kind of neater, tidier one. Now when you're seeing a lot of these like smaller elements where they have these 3D compartments, all I'm doing is slowly taking the craft knife and just excavating out all these sections to obviously make them a bit more layered and terraced. And like I said, you can take those depths down as far as you personally feel, but as long as you get that detail in there, everything should be fine. Okay, now I didn't actually film this part, I forgot, or the video actually cut out, I can't remember. But with the front barrel section here, you've got the main 35 millimeter PVC pipe, and you've got the 40 mil at the end. All you're gonna do is slide the 40 mil over the 35 right to the end and just glue it in there. Let me show you. So here's my 35, here's the 40. Fill it with glue, then slide it over and it should easily go because it's a larger thickness until you get right to the end and then stop. That'll be the end of the gun and that's where you'll put the, the styrofoam cap to cover it with the, the barrel hole. Pretty much and the way you should know that it's sitting right is that there should be at least half an inch of gap between this piece and where the barrel actually starts half an inch gap which will allow you to then structure and know where exactly all these other top parts will go on but we'll get to that right now now this top section is going to require a lot of uh, eye and detail to make sure that it does look great obviously we're applying it onto the foam cutting it down to a, a nicer depth but what we're going to do is we're going to excavate this into three different layers Obviously the middle section will be the highest and then both on the ends we're going to cut it down ever so slightly to make it a bit thinner just to give it that 3D depth. We can then do a little ammo countery thing which you can excavate into it as well in a rectangle and that will sit in the middle pretty much right up against the uh, extra layer. Now if we were to layer this straight onto the foam it wouldn't actually fit so we're just going to cut into this bottom part a nice cylindrical effect to kind of account for the curve in the PVC pipe to allow it to be planted in there flush. And now we can start to put on the final piece at the front, which really sells this as the DC-15, the classic overhanging look that everyone knows. Now what you can do is, before you actually 
take the exact measurements from the template, make sure that the template fits this barrel area. Due to printing and all that stuff, there might be some difference. Make sure that it does fit and overhangs. If it doesn't, you can just quickly extend it uh, on the foam, but ideally you want that whole piece covering that whole front barrel section. Now we're gonna jump back and add in a tiny piece of detail. I tried to do research and figure out what this actually was. I've been trying to figure out for a long time. I really don't know. It doesn't have the, a name or a part. It's just a little design that sits on there, which is a very thin piece of foam with a little extra added on top to kind of make it look like whatever it's supposed to be. I kind of think it's supposed to be like an extendable stock, but that really is a very confusing place to put it. So regardless, it's that little thing added on at a kind of a diagonal slope just to kind of throw it off a bit. Okay, so now we're gonna do the energy ammo clip that sits on the side. This can be at a uh, length up to you. It really doesn't matter. It just depends how much you want to stick it out. You can grab the template. You can slowly cut out a rectangle piece and put it in there. Now, obviously it might not fit 100%, so you can kind of customize it how much you want. And then again, just like we did for the top section, you want to cut a cylindrical area into three quarters of it so that way it sits in there perfectly. Once you got that locked down and you're happy with the size, you're then gonna cut out the second piece. Now this is a smaller and longer piece, if that makes any sense, so it can sit inside that initial rectangle to create the 3D layers. You're then gonna bevel those edges to kind of curve them off to give them the design they want and add in that small little piece that sits on the end, like just for extra bit of detail, why not? <laughs> Throw it in there. And then there's two little tiny pieces of detail that sit on either side of this. We've got this little compartment here and that little compartment there. Easy enough, all we're gonna do is cut little tiny pieces out of foam, give them the cylindrical bend they need so they can sit flush against the PVC pipe, and you can just glue them in. Check the template to know exactly for those placements, but they're relatively simple. And now for the last and final piece that will go on the top barrel, which looks a bit confusing, but relatively, it's actually pretty straightforward. All we're gonna do is go ahead and create six elongated uh, sections at the length of the barrel, but not all the way, just like a tiny bit less to kind of give it that kind of look and you're gonna go ahead and just simply glue them in. You're gonna have three on either side, and then underneath you're gonna have a thicker version which sits at the bottom. Now to complete this, all you're gonna do is go ahead and put all those little final touches on, all those little nicks or little extra pieces that I'm not gonna really show you in this to do because it's the easiest part of this whole design. If you got this far, I'm pretty sure you can go ahead and finish off with little triggers and hand guards and little extra bits that you might wanna add on just to kind of build up the detail. Use some googly eyes if you want to add some more little uh, intense circles sitting on the design somewhere just to build it up when you paint it they'll definitely stand out but that's little things you can look at with the visual references you have and figure out what you want to add in your own time so yeah that's it pretty easy right i mean i'm extremely happy with how this turned out and i think you guys will have some fantastic results whether you're working in styrofoam or eva so hopefully with all the step-by-step -step photography in there you do really see and get an understanding of what each piece is and ideally, you just need to keep looking back at your visual references. I mean, those are the best points of contact for knowing what exactly you're trying to do and trying to achieve in this build. And the only difference is that right now it does look pretty raw, but remember, go ahead, cover this in uh, like some PVA glue and then paint it up nicely and you'll have a fantastic looking prop. It just looks a bit ish. I don't know. I don't know what the word is. Something ish at the moment because it's in its raw state, but that can change pretty quickly. So yeah, I'll end it there. It's been a long enough video. Thank you so much for watching if you have seen it all and good luck to all those who want to continue and build this in the tutorial. If you want to share this with any of your friends or like the video because you just generally like it, that would be awesome. And until the next one, I'll catch you later.